That is the first R Bath in its 73 year history to be fully electric based upon the Fiat 500e. And in this video, I'm gonna do a walk around and tell you everything I know about the car, which goes on sale this summer and promises to be the hottest, feistiest little electric hatch around. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. This episode is proudly supported by blackcircles.com, Britain's largest online tire retailer, providing a comprehensive click and fit service. So let's have a closer look around it. This, as you can see from the registration number, is the Scorpionissima, which is the launch edition name for the car, limited to 1,949 units. 1,949 units because Arbath, the company, was born by Carlo Arbath in 1949. The details of this are really interesting. First of all, it is the first Arbath Fiat to come on 18-inch wheels. The others, the piston cars, come on 17 inch wheels. So it's got these diamond cut wheels that are slightly directional. I'm pretty sure, let's have a look at the tires. Okay, so Bridgestone Potenza Sport 205 40 18. This is interesting because it's an electric car, but it's an electric hot hatch. So the tires need to be performance tires, but also kind of eco specific. If you want to get tires for your car, you can just enter your registration number on the blackcircles.com website. It'll bring up a huge selection of tires for your budget and also specifically for your car. And with over 2000 tire fitting partners, Black Circles will have an agent conveniently located near you. You'll notice the, the caps and the badge as well. Well, and the side stripes, because these are all real hallmarks of the new Arbath 500e. This has got a scorpion, but with a lightning strike through it. It's quite funky, actually. Uh, and I think it's ever so slightly higher because there's always an odd location on the rear quarter panel on an R bath. And then these stripes, which are specific to the Scorpion Isima launch model, they look 3D, but they're not. They are just flat decals. And then underneath those, you can see here a very cool sort of extended sill skirt with our bath embossed just down there. And then we go around the front. And of course, because this is based on the 500E, the 500E's got a built-in kind of bad boy bonnet. If you haven't watched my review on the original 500E, which I did back in 2020, I'll put a link above my head. It doesn't have any kind of grill up here, whereas the piston R bath has a little slit here and a big kind of gaping mouth for cooling down here. But this has got the, the kind of patterned inserts because it doesn't need as much cooling being an EV. The badge here is normally down there. That's been put up there, the original Scorpion badge. And then it's got these kind of white diffusers going on, which is an interesting choice. And remember, you can only buy this car in one of two colors in the launch edition. It's either this, which is acid green, or poison blue, which is a really vivid blue. So our bath says that this is a kind of the, their, their best hot hatch that they've done because the EV drivetrain lends itself very, very well. Lower center of gravity and this new ground up EV shell, the 500 is wider track, longer wheelbase. So it, 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 there's some great stats. It'll actually go around the circuit, um, the test circuit a second quicker than the 695, 180 horsepower R bath. Um, so it's one second quicker from 12 to 25 miles an hour than the piston car one and a half seconds quicker from 25 to 37 miles an hour, and 37 to 62 miles an hour, it's a second quicker. Zero to 62 is seven seconds. So slightly, slightly slower than the 695 R bath piston car, but around a track and overall, it's a nippier car. It's a quicker, nippier car. And of course, you're gonna ask me, what is the power output of this car. Well, the power output of this car, 152 horsepower, which is 155 PS, 173 pounds feet of torque, which is 235 Newton meters. And that electric motor, which lives under there, assembled by GKN in Italy. It's not the same motor as the one in the 500D. It's a higher horsepower, 113.7 kilowatt unit, a 96 mile an hour top speed. Not that anybody cares about top speed anymore, frankly. 
WLTP for very important letters when you're talking electric cars. Well, the battery pack is exactly the same as the 500e brother, which is 42 kilowatt hours. And in the Fiat, it'll do 199 miles WLTP. The one in the R bath, it's not actually confirmed yet. It hasn't finished doing those tests and cycles, but we're reckoning about 155 miles or so. Of course, it depends on how you drive it. It's a much higher performance car. It's, a, it's an EV hot hatch. But if you're driving it very carefully, you might get somewhere in the region of 180. We'll see, we'll see. Oh, and it doesn't have an eco mode. Whereas the 500E has a Sherpa mode where it makes it as efficient as possible. This does have driving modes, but not a Sherpa mode. Nothing to do with the 70s van, I promise you. There's three modes to choose from. First mode, Turismo mode, which is kind of your normal default mode. That smooth acceleration, uh, lower max power, so it brings the power down to 100 kilowatts from 113. Uh, 220 newton meters of torque rather than 235 and you get one pedal driving so lots of regen braking then the next level is called scorpion street mode sounds amazing doesn't it that means you do still get one pedal driving but you get the full power and then there's scorpion track mode which is full power not a lot of regen because you want the pure feeling of the car let's talk about design a bit more so the new version, new logos, which I've already shown you before. On this launch edition, you get the, uh, the glass roof up here. Uh, you get those dedicated wheels, which I've already talked about, and the rear and front diffuser. In fact, let's have a look at the rear diffuser. I don't know if you can come around and have a quick look. Yes, there is white inserts, just like the front, just there. And it's weird seeing an R bath without big drain pipe exhausts, but there is a sound to this. We'll demonstrate that in a second when we look at the interior, when we look at the cabin. The back end's actually quite simple and played down, I think. You've got the R bath badge here in kind of matte finish, but there's, there's nothing else really to distinguish it, especially compared to the piston car, which is a little bit more of a, of a hooligan. So just like the other R baths, you will be able to order this in a cabrio as well as a hardtop. Uh, and I believe the cabrio has a black hood, with the spoiler integrated into it. I've come back to the front because I've just remembered it does come with LED headlights as standard, which I'll show a picture of now. Two other designer elements that you get on the Arbath 500E. You get these sort of matte grey cappings on the, the door mirrors. The Arbath sign on the front is matte grey and you get gangster glass as standard. It's all privacyed out, whether you like it or not. What do you think it looks like? I think it looks really good, especially like that decal. I don't know whether it's the, uh, the fact that we're in this, this kind of Infinity Co studio, but it does look mad. Remember that the Fiat 500e, when it was launched a couple of years ago, is a ground up new car, EV specific chassis. That's why this car is a different R-Bath to the existing piston r -Bath. It is a different body shell. This is slightly wider, slightly longer wheelbase. And in this case, it'll be lower center of gravity, better weight distribution. So it should be a more fun, more our bathy our bath, if that's a thing. Charging. It's down here. Here we go, look, yeah. Pull the bungs out. It's got a little light on there. 85 kilowatts rapid charge DC capability. So that's zero to 80% charge in 35 minutes. That's the best it'll do. Um, or at 11 kilowatts AC, you'll get zero to 100% four hours, 15 minutes. Gonna have to show you the boot space. It's dull, but it's important when you're thinking of buying a car like this. It's dark in there because it's all black and moody and it does always make me smile when I see the world's smallest parcel shelf. Um, that there is a 185 litre boot. It's the same boot size as the 500E. If you're thinking, how does that compare to other small uh, hot hatchy electric things? Well, the Honda E, 171 litres, tiny boot. The Mini, 211 litres, larger than this boot and 50-50, so you can drop one of the seats down if you don't need all the boot space, uh, or all the seating space all of the time, just makes it a little bit more practical. And I believe under the boot floor is where you keep your cables most of the time. But there's something called a sound generator. We're gonna learn more about that now when we go inside.
You join me in the cabin with Pietro, who is the product manager of our bath. Is that right in the UK? Yes. Now, I'm really interested in this car because one of the hallmarks of little cheeky R bar 5 and 695s is they, they really gurgle and roar. Yeah. But this is obviously electric. Absolutely. So R bar's done something fun with a sound, ge sound generator. Remember I said about the sound generator. Could you demonstrate what on earth? There's, there's, I know there's a few sound effects this car makes. Yeah. But the one available on this car is the sound generator that is going to replicate an engine noise. Right. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mimic of the piston motor. Exactly. Okay. Please demonstrate. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm purposely not okay. listening to this yet. Okay, it's really loud. It's down there somewhere, isn't it, at the back? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so really, and that will work with the throttle as you... Yes, as you go, it will change. And can you alter the volume or is it that loud? This is the higher volume it gets, but okay. you can uh, kind of turn it down if you want. I was going to say, it's, it's really, I mean, I know we're in a room, but it is really loud. Yeah, it is. That's cool. So that, that will work. You'll hear it in and outside. Absolutely. So there's a speaker somewhere down there, I'm guessing. Yeah. The sound is mostly outside. It's yeah. more like a kind of real exhaust. Yeah. And is that an option? I know it's, it comes as standard, I think, on this car, the Scorpion exactly. is somewhere. Correct. But is it an option on, on other...? It will be available also on the normal range, absolutely. Right, okay. It's, it's like, it's the soul of Albert, we cannot keep it yeah. uh, from ourselves. Oh, it has to be loud. That is loud. It's really quite loud. If you want, we can, we can show, you can show the different um, settings, because whenever you change the, the mode, yeah. this is the Turismo, yeah. you can change it, it goes to street, and. As you can see, it changes slightly the configuration, yeah. as well as the Scorpion track. Uh, it's different. Uh, it gives you different information depending of the, on the mode that you are, you are on. That's nice. Now, this does other sound effects other than the engine, doesn't yes. it? Yes, absolutely. Um, when the sound generator is turned off, whenever you hit the 20 km per hour, the car gives you a rock jingle. <laughs> okay. And a rock jingle. As well as when you turn it off. But okay. this is not available on this one because it's just a prototype. But okay, okay. Well, if we can get some of that uh, sound effect for this video, we'll put it in. Put it in. So it's like a rock guitar jingle. Absolutely. When you, when you start it up or when you go over 20 kilometers, 20 kilometers yes, an hour. Exactly. Because uh, it, it's uh, a safety feature yeah. uh, to uh, let the people that are around you know that you are in an electric car and that you are coming across. Fantastic. That's really loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Oh, yeah, I see the speakers just there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be interesting to see how many people keep that sound effect. Yeah, it would be interesting. When, when the car's in mass production. Yeah, exactly. It would be just, um, you know, you can have it, either have it or not. Let's have touch of the bottom. You decide yeah. uh, if you like it or not. There are some days you want them, some days you don't want them. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just as you wish. What do you think? Sound effects like this for EVs, or just keep it quiet, enjoy the silence? Let me know in the comments. There you go, even realistically turns off. So this is the cabin in more detail of the R-Bath 500e. So first things first, you've got a few colors, you've got two colors, see all the stitching is double, and these two colors are the colors that you get in the launch model. So that's poison blue and this acid green. These really cool one-piece Alcantara seats that have got the, that new Scorpion logo there kind of etched in. Um, and then down here, you've got these crazy kind of, it is a scorpion actually, but it reminds me of a sort of 80s hot hatch in a good way. And I like that very much. Then you've got the center console, because of course this is the 500E, so it has a different shaped dash completely to the, to the piston 500s. Um, this sort of little floating plinth with a, with a, not a flat floor, but nearly a flat floor. Um, and this is your, your drive modes here, your E modes, and I'll show you those in a minute. And then in there, got a place to 
put phones and charge stuff and then in there wireless phone charging ability oh and while i'm on my knees metal covers with the Arbath logo on the uh, the brake the throttle and your sort of foot foot plate on the left hand side and Arbath sill plates and an Arbath steering wheel shock horror Alcantara and a little bit of leather at the top and bottom with the nice little stripe stitched in up there the Alcantara insert in this kind of flowing dash piece here is the same it's kind of like corduroy Alcantara which is no bad thing at all in my book makes a big difference having a glass roof especially in a car with so much darkness in here you know, dark roof here these pillars are dark here um, back seats are dark but you've got a loop don't know if I can do it from here can you see this loop that's to obviously get in the three-door car and that's in poison blue finish as well and although this isn't the finished version because this is a pre-production kind of prototype there are I believe some new performance pages and for the first time customers will get fully connected and real-time information on their car I know there's an app as well like there is on the 500 e so to do with the electric vehicle connectivity you can do all that through your phone if you so wish so the order books open for the 500 ER bath in February next month and then the cars will start being delivered I believe in June so middle of middle of summer restricted initially because of the launch car to 1949 models um, yeah and at the moment this is this is the only R bath cut model the, the 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 500 and the 500e because if you think of the Fiat 124 version based on the MX-5 that went out of production quietly in 2019 I'd actually not realised that until I did a bit of research. That was a good car. I first drove a Fiat R Bath, the new generation, in 2008. I think that's when it was launched. It's been deeply successful for Fiat, so although it is their only model, as in the only R Bath is a 500 derivative, it's a fine selling car. It's going to be interesting to see how this one behaves compared to the piston car. What about rivals? If you're looking at buying one of these, what could you buy instead? I had a little bit of a brainstorm and I was thinking the recently deceased BMW i3s, great car, but they're taking it off sale, which is a cry and shame. The Mini Electric, of course, which is a BMW group car. Now that's probably the closest rival to the Arbath 500e. And I was thinking, how fast is that? That's 7.3 seconds to 62. So that's actually slower than this. And it's got lower range as well 144 miles wltp you could also consider the honda e one of my favorite cars despite the fact that it's very expensive and despite the fact that it is a lot slower than this 8.3 seconds to 62 but i would have a look at it because there's something about it especially the cabin i'll put a link above my head if you haven't watched my video on that particular car price this have they've just confirmed it's going to be 38,695 quid for the hard top the hatchback and for the uh, Cabrio, 41 and a half grand nearest damn it, which is expensive. Is it too expensive? Well, we'll sh we shall see, but that is for the launch edition. It'll get cheaper once the launch editions have gone out. I'm very keen to know what you think of this. Maybe you're an existing Arbath driver and you're thinking of delving into the EV world with one of these. Thanks for watching this episode of The Late Break Show. If you haven't already subscribed, why not subscribe? Typically 50% of my new car reviews are EVs. Maybe you want to support us via Patreon, where you'll typically get early access to these sorts of videos and you'll get blogs written by me. Thanks for watching.